talk is Seeing Through the Fog, which is just kind of a play on cloud. Uh, again, the, I guess it's sort of cut off a little bit, but uh, just give you my background real quick. So I got my start in the intelligence community, spent seven years doing NSA and, and other interesting places. Uh, ended up co-founding a endpoint security company called Carbon Black. It's probably like 900 employees right now. Uh, and then I got a niche to do something else. So uh, about a year ago, I left and started Obsidian Security. We're actually down in Newport Beach, so not too far. Uh, and I love startups, so I'm on several startup boards and, and that kind of thing. Uh, CTO at Obsidian. Uh, one thing I'll mention is uh, maybe I've been fortunate or you could say unfortunate uh, in my roles, especially at Carbon Black, it was really to go around and meet lots of individuals like yourselves or your organizations. So I did about 100 flights every year, and that's globally. So uh, about 500,000 miles in three years and uh, learned a lot of lessons. So I'm trying to, trying to take some of those lessons here. Um, so again, this is a little bit off. Maybe I'll scroll. <laughs> We'll see how that works. Uh, but really, when I go to a conference like this or a talk like this, I know for me personally, it's a time to reflect. It's, it's that forced reflection time, that contemplation time. Just get away and, and think about some things, maybe long-term goals, maybe strategy, uh, maybe think about a hard technical problem you've been trying to solve and you just can't because you can't get away from the email and everything. Um, if you're expecting a super technical talk, I'm sorry to disappoint you. It's not going to be super technical. Hopefully, it's a right mix of, of sort of thought leadership, if that's an arrogant thing to say, um, you know, policy and, and some of that stuff with hopefully some enough, you know, sort of technical discussion to, to whet your appetite. And again, I'll just scroll down and I've never had to do this before, so it's kind of interesting. So uh, starting off, transformation, digital transformation, and being in the afternoon, you've probably been to multiple talks, maybe a lot of you give talks, so I'll add the disclaimer that there's always a lot of buzzwords, and I apologize, cyber itself is a buzzword, uh, it's just the way we live. So you'll hear me say lots of, lots of buzzwords today, but I don't think it's a surprise, and I think this kind of conference has really been here for a while, but this whole notion of cloud and digital transformation and everyone's racing and trying to get to the cloud as fast as possible, and also who doesn't love Dilbert? So thinking about cloud, it truly is a race, and people are just saying, you know what, how can we get there? How can we get there fast? The other night my dad said, hey, what is the cloud? And it's like, how do you explain that, right? Um, so it's, it's basically other people's computers. Um, but there's lots of benefits, otherwise we wouldn't be moving in that direction as an industry, as really a globe, but we're not really here to discuss that. We're here to discuss some of the technology challenges, some of the security and risk challenges. So when we compare IT and security, and a lot of times when I talk to companies, there is a difference between those two teams. There's, you know, maybe security is within the overall IT organization, maybe the CISO reports to the CIO, but usually they're pretty different, right? IT is all about enablement and availability and onboarding and provisioning, and security is a little bit not like that, right? It's about risk mitigation and controls and proper understanding. Uh, and so with this race to the cloud, you know, I put quotes on here and I'm a big quote guy, but IT is going zero to 100 and sort of leaving security in the dust. And then you start adding all these different services, maybe SaaS types of services, SaaS accounts, and it's hard to understand what the heck's going on. And then even just things like moving to AWS or Azure or Google Cloud or really any of them, you don't really know who's logging in and doing what, at least not well enough. So we start to think about, okay, so what's actually going on? How is this going? Well, you're probably already sick of this and we'll talk about that in a second, but modern times are leaky. There's lots and lots and lots of headlines. Again, it's a little different. I don't usually scroll. It's kind of kind of interesting. Um, so there's lots of lots of headlines. It's like basically every week, some huge database or huge bucket or whatever was made available to the whole world, um, or at least to people that it shouldn't be made of. Um, and the data breaches keep going. And so on the right side, you sort of see you know, several years ago, and then it just starts to explode, and now it's just, you can't even fit them on a screen. And each one of those bubbles is like massive. 
like probably everyone in this room was affected by Equifax and some of those things, right? So it's, it's, it's pretty insane. Uh, but it's not just IaaS, infrastructure as a service. A lot of times we think about S3 buckets, we think about um, just you know more like infrastructure type breaches, but then you start seeing things like Deloitte mi migrating from on-prem to Office 365 and they get compromised. You see more and more SaaS type compromises. And again, as we were talking about earlier, you don't really know what's going on. They're not 100% sure what was taken. It's really hard. And so maybe raise your hand if you have breach fatigue or raise your hand if you know people that have breach fatigue, which is everybody. Um, this is actually becoming a problem because we're desensitizing ourselves to these massive breaches. We're saying, oh yeah, all that stuff got lost or all that, uh, you know, those records got hacked. Didn't really affect me. Well, a lot of times it's indirectly affecting you and it's hard to put a price on that or hard to see it in your wallet. Um, but the fact that we're starting to be desensitized to some of these leaks and some of these breaches is bad because we need people to care. We need to care about our data. So causation, and I'm playing on all these words, right? They're all similar types of words. Um, so what's the cause maybe? Well, there's actually a huge confusion over who's responsible. Who actually owns security of your quote unquote stuff when you go to the cloud? Well, really there's provider and there's the enterprise, right? There's you and your organization. And so let me see if I can, I think everything's on the screen there. Um, the goals are often not in alignment. The provider is about access. It's about availability. It's about providing the service. They're not really about security. And similarly, they want it oftentimes to be easy. So you accidentally click the wrong button and your S3 bucket is open to the whole world. Now, if you keep up with this stuff, Amazon finally did add a big giant warning that says public, but that was only recently after too many of these buckets were public. Uh, a lot of times monitoring is extra work to actually configure monitoring, whether it's you know, down at the virtual server or even you know, something like a SaaS application. Office 365, a lot of the logging isn't even enabled by default. You have to turn it on. And then guess what? It's only available for 14 days. So if you have a hack 15 days later, you know about it. It's not, not easy. Uh, and then a lot of times, the more people you have accessing your SaaS application, your infrastructure as a service application, whatever, it becomes complex to manage these policies and these identities. And so finally, you can kind of empathize with these providers because they really want the easy button. They want every mom and pop shop to migrate to the cloud. And so they want it easy, but then they also need to support the massive tech giants, like the Netflixes that run on top of Amazon, and need that flexibility, right? So it's tough. It's how do, you, how do you serve both types of customers? And then on the enterprise side, lack of understanding. Even just knowing that you're responsible for security evades a lot of organizations. They don't really know that they're responsible. And then I'm sure a lot of you could tell me stories about this, but departments just sort of take the plunge. They just race. They're like, oh yeah, we're just gonna add Slack. We're gonna start using Slack tomorrow. Not tell anybody, whatever, right? Um, or maybe they sort of know in IT, but it doesn't trickle down to security. Um, so it's tough and I get it. I talk to government organizations that are like, yeah, we would love to use Slack. We just don't know how to protect it. So there are challenges there and we understand why people take the plunge or bend the rules but that doesn't make security easier. Uh, and then your security team, especially if you're a more established, maybe older organization or you know, company, you are set up to defend more on-prem assets, or at least we'll say less elastic type assets. And now all of a sudden you can spin up and change your surface area that you're defending with a couple clicks and super fast, right? So, so that's really tough. And I was fortunate to sit next to uh, I didn't know at the time until he started talking, the former CIO of the Air Force the other, uh, like, December. And he's like, oh, yeah, operators think once they move stuff to the cloud, it's not their responsibility in terms of security. So it's not just, like, me, not just us. Like, everyone has these challenges. Furthermore, 
it's not just that. It's not just things like awareness. There's a ton of security problems right now. So the number one problem, and sure, we can debate all this stuff, and if we have extra time at the end, I would love to debate it. But to me, the number one problem is the skills gap. There's just not enough qualified butts and seats, right? <laughs> to put it lightly. Um, but then deploy and decay. I don't know if you guys have used this term or heard about it, but the fact that you set up technology, you set up your security stack, and it actually gets worse over time because you actually need to do care and feeding. You need to tune your detection rules. You need to deter, uh, sorry, tune your collection rules as well. All that kind of stuff. And this all leads, guess what? Lack of cyber self-esteem. The security teams don't think they can make a huge dent in how the overall employee population use technology. Maybe the CISO doesn't think he can hire enough people to fill his or her staff. And then you combine this with just more and more data. You know, we say every copy of data is a liability, right? More and more data, it's very easy to just copy now, auto automatically back up to the cloud, all sorts of stuff like that. And then with all the hacker successes, it's like any market. Competition jumps in because people are having success. So all of this is working against us. And I don't mean to sound so pessimistic, but it's a bleak outlook right now. So who's really responsible for all this? Well, I think, uh, I think Amazon puts it pretty well. Let's see, So they say, hey, we are responsible for security of the cloud, but you are responsible for security in the cloud. I think that's a pretty good way to put it. And they actually give a nice chart. So it's basically hardware and the layer on top of hardware to manage the elasticity and stuff like that. And by the way, feel free to take all the pictures you want, but I'm happy to give you all the slides too. So, um, But there's a lot of stuff in blue, and that's your responsibility or my responsibility. It's not just Amazon. Here's Azure. They actually show platform as a service as well and on-prem, but there's still a lot of blue even going all the way over to SaaS. And so when you start thinking about SaaS, hey, we're using, I don't know, Salesforce, Box, Dropbox, pick all these different very, very popular products, you still have to handle identity and access management, what clients are being used to connect to these services, and then the data. So they help. They mean you don't have to patch all these servers and things like that. That's a huge win for security teams but you still have a lot that you have to do. And if you think about Office 365, they're the ones patching the servers, they're the ones handling uptime and availability, but you have to be responsible, or you are responsible, for what gets emailed, who accesses the email, and how they access it. So yeah, moving to the cloud is awesome in a lot of ways, but it doesn't remove our obligation around security. It just changes maybe slightly what we have to defend. And so if you think about this, hackers, adversaries, attackers, use your term of the day, they want data and they might want your identity. They might want to assume your you know, accounts or, or, or your identity to then you know, further their cause, further their campaign. And guess what? You're responsible for that. And same with Azure, right? There's a lot of blue in the areas that organizations are responsible for. It's even maybe a little worse in ways because it's not like they have to hop over a firewall or get a user to open an email. If they can guess your password, there's a 24-7 cloud that's willing to take it, right? <laughs> so there's some challenges there. So how do we get better? And I can't even pronounce this word, but it means get better. Well, I'm going to throw a lot of different terms in here. Some of you maybe are old enough to know them or have looked at them in certain ways, and, and maybe they're new to some. But we have to think about confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So really, privacy, you know, who has access to our information? Can we trust it? And is it accessible? I think in the cloud, accessibility is less of a concern, right? And probably integrity is less of a concern, too. So it's more around confidentiality. But and it looks like it didn't move, but I had a picture of you looking in the mirror and saying, don't forget blind spots, don't forget visibility. So you need to be able to see what's going on in your environment. 
and I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Looks like a lot of the images didn't, uh, didn't transfer over, so that's okay. So what can we maybe do about this, right? So we're talking about hygiene, we're talking about things like that. Well, what I wanna go into is I throw a lot of A's at you, just cause you know, maybe it's easier to remember. Uh, and so uh, I'll just go on to the next slide where I start to break it out if, if this even works. <laughs> Looks like uh, quite the conversion rate here. Um, but it starts with awareness. Uh, you know, I think going to a talk like this, going to a conference like this, if you're not aware that you have these responsibilities, you're not going to do a good job, right? You're not going to put energy into something if you don't think it's your responsibility, if you're not thinking that you're accountable. And so it all starts with awareness. And I had a nice picture here. Uh, the cloud is actually probably a lot bigger and scarier than you think. I talked to organizations just, just recently, a major airline, and they're like, oh, we, we know of 16 different Slack teams that our company has set up that are completely independent of each other, that aren't sanctioned. That's just what we know about, right? Um, I would consider that part of their cloud, right? And then people are setting up things in AWS, Azure, Google, IBM clouds, Rackspace, whatever, other clouds. Um, it's just so easy to set up the stuff and so easy to move data that your surface area is probably a lot bigger than you think. So, I don't know how many presenters have shown you a blank screen, but I've done it a bunch now, and it wasn't even intentional. Um, but, <laughs> you know, yeah, take a picture. <laughs> um, uh, after, after awareness, though, it's really around auditing. Can you take a look at what your surface area actually is? What do you actually have in terms of infrastructure as a service or software as a service? Who's accessing that information? What teams, what business units, what are they doing? Really getting to a place where you at least have understanding of what's going on. Um, that's, that's my second recommendation after awareness. It looks like we'll just keep going on the whites. The third is around adaptation. So you've set up policies, you've set up teams, you've, you've set up maybe incident response plans. Can you adapt those more to the cloud and start to understand how you apply your existing resources, your existing tools to this different surface area. The fourth thing is, can you do all of this automatically? See, you're going to remember this talk because you're going to be like, that dude had a lot of white slides that had nothing on them. Giant white cloud. See, it's so foggy. Remember, the title of the talk is Fog. So this is actually perfect. <laughs> um, the fourth is automation, and I don't think that's a surprise to a single person in here, but how many uh, tasks, how many workflows, how many you know, ways of deploying things, and, and we know DevOps is hot, but how much automation can you implement so that humans aren't making mistakes, humans aren't setting up S3 buckets accidentally public and leaking all of our voter information or whatever, right? So um, can you start to automate some of these processes? And ideally, you've already been doing that. And so now it's just adjusting those to some of these new maybe SaaS applications, whatever, that you're migrating to. So let's see how many more white slides I got. I think there's a couple text ones that maybe work, but we will see. But oh, we're starting to get somewhere. Um, so, when, we, when I talked about hygiene, uh, and then I'll talk about AAA, um, I actually had a nice slide that shows a huge traffic jam, and then it shows like a racetrack, like a NASCAR racetrack. And it's like, what does your IT look more like? The huge traffic jam with everyone basically going into each other, or a nice clean racetrack? It's probably not the racetrack, right? But the whole point is, can you think about hygiene? Can you get to a better place where your consistency and your lack of entropy actually allows automation to do much better, right? And it helps with those deploy and decay problems because if you have more consistency, then the anomalies kind of point themselves out, right? But if everything is basically different in all of these different services, if the way people authenticate is different, whatever, you're never going to get your handle on it. So what I wanted to talk about here is, I don't know if anyone's 
goes back far enough, but AAA was actually a kind of a big thing, which was, hey, you have to think about authentication, authorization, and accounting. It looks like it didn't copy over my text, but basically, I said, authentication is a huge focus right now, which is true. We're seeing more single sign-on providers, we're seeing rethinking passwords, all great stuff. But what about authorization? Things like privilege creep. I've heard the term identity sprawl. You join a company, you provision accounts, you provision permissions, you get put into groups. Two years later, you move. You don't lose any of that access. It just creates a lot more surface area for mistakes, for adversaries to steal and use against you, for insiders to do things. So authorization has to be a bigger focus. And accounting, just knowing what's going on with these systems. We're talking about visibility, we're talking about knowing who's doing what in these different cloud systems. It's important. And accounting is basically neglected a lot of the time. So, looks like we might be, in case you didn't know, security's everyone's business. <laughs> Sorry about the uh, technical challenges, I'm happy to to, uh, to send out the keynote or the PowerPoint version of all this. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is an awesome, uh, we are hiring. That was gonna be my big ending, is we are hiring. Down in Newport Beach, beautiful Newport Beach, if you know Fashion Island, we are right there in the towers, uh, 17 people. Um, so really, I guess to wrap up, uh, since you know we sort of skipped like five or six slides there, uh, the, whole, the whole point is people are moving to the cloud fast. And again, probably not news to a single person in here. Um, what is interesting is even very conservative, like 100-year-old banks and stuff are like flying to the cloud. And that doesn't mean 100% of their assets are there, but it just means that companies that have never even had the appetite, and I'll be honest, even like intelligence community agencies and stuff are thinking about it, right? Um, so people are moving fast. The challenge is we don't have great visibility. We don't have great uh, processes to incorporate these kinds of new systems and data into, for example, incident response or remediation, right? You have to be able to detect, respond, recover. Can you do that now when maybe Slack is part of the investigation or Dropbox or whatever, right? These kinds of things you have to think about and maybe get ahead and, and think about how do these things fit into my workflows. Secondly, being at OWASP, most of the OWASP top 10, the cloud doesn't fix for you, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's still your problem, or all of our problems. And I wish I had them up here. Um, but the, the fact is, most of the problems are around you know, uh, cross-site scripting, not, not enough um, uh, authentication controls, authorization as we talked about, like all these different things that are still your responsibility. So we have to start with awareness, then we have to start thinking about, okay, can I even understand my surface area? Can I change my team or my tools to help defend this new surface area? And then maybe automate it, right? We don't have enough people, the cloud is just exploding and there's all these other tools now that we're using to copy data and do you know, business operations. Can we defend those? Thinking about privilege creep, thinking about hygiene around keeping my surface area as small as possible, and then really just understanding that this is the way forward and we're gonna have to incorporate this into everything we do from a security perspective, right? There's just, availability is 365, 24 seven now. So we really have to make sure that we understand what our surface area is. I know I'm repeating myself now. Um, so thank you, I think we have, we have quite a bit of time since like half the slides. We have 15 minutes. Um, we are hiring uh, coders, data scientists, few security people. Um, we're stealth mode though, so I won't, I won't do a sales pitch because I won't even tell you what we're doing. Um, any questions? I know that was kind of the craziest talk ever, but. Uh, email is pretty simple. I, I also have uh, business cards. It's just Ben at obsidiansecurity.com. Uh, my Twitter is at Chicago Ben, because I used to live in Chicago. Um, so feel free to, to get these slides. I think they're actually pretty cool. Uh, you only get to see like 40% of them, I think. Um, 
but I would love to answer any questions, anything. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier, you know, IPs running at uh, zero to 100, sometimes 250 miles an hour faster than everybody else. Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll repeat it just maybe for the recording or something. Um, so the question is, uh, with this migration, are essentially security teams getting just, just bowled over and, and, and overrun? Um, you know, I think, I think to answer your question, uh, in part, yes, <laughs> but in part, no, uh, meaning all of these breaches, and we talked about breach fatigue and all that, they are creating enough awareness where the CEOs and the boards are at least discussing it. Like you talk about some of these huge companies like, like GE and some of these other ones where cyber is a portion of every single board meeting, right? Um, and so it is becoming a, continually becoming a concern and a lot of CEOs and other leaders say it's, you know, kind of their number one concern of 2018. So that's helping. Uh, CIOs are um, usually listening to their CISOs more. A lot of times it's, hey, other business units outside of IT, <laughs> circumvent even IT, right? I think that's more of the challenge. I don't, I'm, and I'm not saying that it isn't a challenge between security and IT and that sort of, you know, push and pull kind of relationship. Um, but a lot of times it's marketing or finance or sales operations or development or whatever that's just going and signing up for JIRA or Slack or, you know, whatever. So um, what I'm seeing starting to work is, and I know this is way easier said than done, is if you get ahead of it a little bit from a security perspective, meaning like, hey, I know you're gonna wanna use Slack. Let's get it authorized and show you how to sign up through the sanctioned way, not through shadow IT or whatever, right? So um, I, think, I think we have a lot of challenges right now around IT versus security, but I think more so, to summarize, it's these other business units that aren't even really following IT's policies or IT's workflow. Um, and so the, in order to, to solve it, you have to make it easy to do the right thing versus just do, do what you want because people are gonna use these tools no matter what, and so you gotta make it easy for them to do it the right way. So when you have a CEO that controls the board, so when, when you have a CEO that controls the board um, and the board wants to do the right thing from a security perspective, but doesn't necessarily know about security within the organization and the CEO is a little obstinate to do anything about security. Given that situation, what would you recommend the security team do other than just quit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are a lot of uh, security positions open. Um, <laughs> negative unemployment, right? Um, yeah, uh, so, so when I talk to CISOs, uh, the, the number one way they get across their point is using the term economic impact. Uh, I've heard some really smart ones continually use this term. So it's, it's not about risk or using the term risk. It's not about using adversaries or whatever. It's around showing the economic impact of, hey, if this happens, this is the result to our bottom line or this is the result to our you know stock price or quarterly number, right? And we know that with or we might know, um, sometimes the stock price recovers, but usually there's still damage done. So it's, it's really first around education, and then look for the quick wins. Like, say, hey, Mr. CEO or Mrs. CEO, we can do this without a lot of friction, right? Because a lot of it's around, hey, I don't want to do it because it's going to slow down productivity or it's going to add friction to my employees. Like, that's, that's sort of the number one hindrance in security, right? At least, at least from my perspective. And you all probably live that night and day. And, and so showing how you can do stuff that reduces the likelihood of that economic impact, maybe for less money, through maybe open source tools or some other things, right? Partnering with some other organizations, uh, maybe getting some free help from you know whomever. Um, but there isn't a simple answer to your question. That's why I'm kind of rambling. Uh, but first and foremost, it starts with awareness. Sometimes the cloud is actually a blessing because then you can start to say, hey, look, we're moving all this stuff here. At least give us some tools to enhance our new surface area. Like maybe the old mess is kind of a lost cause, <laughs> but you can start to get ahead of it through that. The other thing is if you can start to get different business unit leaders, like depending on the size of your organization, right? But if you can get different business unit leaders, like let's say marketing wants to use a new tool and you, you convince them to 
include part of their budget to give you an extra headcount or at least some monitoring for that tool or something like that, right? So those things tend to work where you start to democratize security a little bit more. Um, but ultimately, if the CEO really doesn't believe in security, honestly, don't think they'll be CEO that long <laughs> or they'll have to wake up. Any more questions? People want a longer break? Go think about all the fog. I apologize for that. Happy to send out slides, ben at obsidiansecurity.com or at Chicago Ben. I'm on LinkedIn as well. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. Thank you. Thank you.